kittens, it is Sugar, and I am starting a new series today, something that I've been thinking about for a while, and I get lots of questions on a personal level, so I thought I would start making YouTube videos about that, and that is Talk Sex with Sugar. I'm going to start this out with my five top tips for um, upping your sex life either in a relationship or out of a relationship, things that you can do to basically have better sex, whether it is just for you or for you and your partner. Number one tip that I can always say is know what you like. This is so important. If you don't know whether you like it, then you need to experiment. You need to know your own body, know what you like. That way, when you are with someone and they are maybe doing something that you don't like, then you can refer to them to something that you do like so that it is an enjoyable experience. And if you don't know, then how can you tell them? And if you don't know, how are they supposed to know? And that's really important. So know what you like, you know, do what you need to do to know what it is that you like, whether it is masturbation or sleeping with other people, become familiar with your body. That is why as you get older, sex definitely gets way better because you start to learn what you like. And that sadly only comes with experience, whether it's experience with other people or experience with yourself. There's really only one way to know and that's to do it. Go out there and have fun and be safe. Uh, find out things that you like so that you can share that with others. Best homework assignment ever, right? Totally. Number two, and I mentioned this briefly in the first one, is communication. Be communicating. Communicate with your partner, whether it's something that they're doing that you don't care for, whether it's something that you do care for, talk to them and talk to them before, after, and during. You have to have open communication through the whole process. Now, if it's really good sex, you're not gonna be very verbal, but you know, grunting, moaning, that's still communication, and that lets your partner know that you enjoy what they are doing. Afterwards, also say, I really like when you did such and such. I really like when you did this thing or that thing. It's really important. And say, you know, I didn't really care for that that much, but if you did it this way, give them an example of what you do like and let them know that it is the action, not them personally. That's very important when given any kind of criticism to speak specifically of the action that they're doing that you don't care for. So the person knows that you're not attacking them as a person, but you are focusing on the behavior. That's important across the board when dealing with anything, but it's very specific when it comes to sex. So you don't say, I'm sorry, you're bad in bed. You can say, I'm sorry, this particular thing that you did, I didn't care for. Maybe there are other, other people, other partners that you've had in the past that absolutely loved that particular thing, but it just doesn't work for me. Each person's body is gonna be different and each person is gonna respond differently to different stimuli. This is a difficult video to talk about because I'm trying not to use gender norms or sex norms because I don't want to leave anybody out. But communication is so important. Talk to the person that you're with before, after, and during. If they don't know what they're doing right and what they're doing wrong, how are they going to do what you enjoy? I think that's a really good way to explain it. So you need to talk to them. And if you are not comfortable having this conversation, then maybe you shouldn't be having sex. <laughs> Just saying. You have to have this conversation. It's really important. And again, always practice safe sex and consent is extremely important. I'm gonna say that probably over and over again in this video because it's so important. Third, make sex special. You get in, say, a dry spell. It happens. It happens to the best of us. We all get into a dry spell. But make it something special. Go out on a date night or make a plan for it. Say, this Friday, 
I don't have to work the next day and I'm going to go out and buy this special outfit, be it lingerie, and you're going to spend time getting ready, preparing for sex. Because then you're going to think about if you like to shave your legs, then you're thinking about my partner's going to touch my leg and they're going to like the feel of my leg. Or if you don't shave your legs, that's the kind of thing you'll put lotion on to make your skin soft. Or if you're a guy, you know, you can maybe do a little manscaping if that's what you're into or not but take time to prepare for sex because the process of preparing for sex will have your brain thinking about it and it'll work as a stimuli and then by the time you actually get to sex you've already had that mental process that mental stimuli of thinking about it and that it will work as a bit of foreplay in your brain this is really important for people who are more mentally stimulated versus physically stimulated this is a way to stimulate your sex drive on a mental level so that your brain is in the right space so that when you are about to have sex your physical body doesn't take that long to get in the mood per se. Make time, make plans. Say, normally you have sex every day in your bed and go, you know, this Friday, I really wanna test the strength of that kitchen table that I have. Or I wonder what would happen on the kitchen counter. Or we could really do this interesting position if we were on the floor, because we would have more room. So make plans, plan out what you want to do and what you want to experiment on and then think about it whether it's for a couple of days or for a week because then it becomes something special something you look forward to something that you are thinking in the back of your head as you go about your day and I think that's really important to um, break up a dry spell or if you're just in a rut where you're just going through, especially if you're in a really long relationship where you're just like, okay, we're going to do A, B, C, and D. And then if I buy, the, buy F, you know, this person's finished, I'm finished, we're good, we're down and over in 15 minutes. And it might be physically satisfying, but mentally it's not as stimulating. So this is a way to kind of switch things up, make it special, do something interesting. And you don't have to do this all the time. If it's been a month or so where you haven't you've haven't really taken the time to put the effort in to do something special, this is a great way to do that. It's also a great way to surprise your partner where if you are making these special plans and your partner isn't necessarily aware of the things that you had in mind and then you surprise them the day of and you'd be like, today I had this idea that we were going to do these things, communication and consent <laughs> and safety. <laughs> Number four is take your time. Now I'm gonna go in a little bit more about heterosexual sex versus uh, gay sex. And the reason why is because in heterosexual sex, it is really common that people don't take their time. It's usually wham, bam, thank you ma'am, and that's it. And it's and sex isn't all about in a course. There's foreplay, there's mental stimulation, there's cuddling, and there's all of that. So if you find that you that your sex has gotten down just in a course, take some time, put some effort into it, slow things down a little bit, and talk to your partner. You know, sometimes that's great, sometimes you just need that really simple basic sex and sometimes you should really look into longer sex basically. Tell your partner if your partner is finishing and you're not and this is a common occurrence, one, you need to have communication and let them know and two, slow things down. You know, tell them that you want A, B, C, and D and say this time I would really like to aim for me to have a complete finish whether that whether they finish or not or whether they finish and you want to keep going it's okay if the guy finishes and you say hey i'm not really finished i want to keep going if you say that sometimes guys will you know take care of you and then they'll be up for round two or round three after they've had a little time to recover but if you hadn't spoken up then that would have been the end of it so again communication but also try to expand what your view of sex is that it's not just something so black and white so simple experiment a little bit and um take some time for it make it a little bit of more of a time priority 
Don't make it be just another function that you go through the process without really even thinking about it or considering it. You know, make it, again, make it something special, but give yourself some time. The last one is give and take. Don't necessarily have one-sided sex. It's okay if in a really long-term relationship that that happens on occasion. Sometimes, you know, I really just want to treat rocky or i really just want to treat my partner and i'm not so concerned about my own needs but if that happens try to make sure that the next time you get your needs met or if you find that you are with somebody who is not meeting your needs have a conversation again communication about your needs being met and give and take is so important i think there's a lot of one-sided sex and it's not as enjoyable for one person as it is for the other and i think that's something that one is really sad and two give as good as you get so if you are having a fabulous time in bed try to make sure that you are treating your partner as well as you're being treated if you are really enjoying yourself try to enjoy them so if they are doing for you and meeting all your needs then take care of them and what i have found is if i focus on my partner and I really, really just try to make the experience very enjoyable for my partner, then in return, they do the same for me. Now, sometimes I've had to speak up and ask for certain things. Sometimes I had to say, hey, you know, I would like you to do some more. And they're almost always accommodating. And if they're not accommodating, then maybe you are with the wrong people. It's a really good telltale sign. So if your partner isn't willing to meet your needs, then you need to have a conversation about what your needs are and how they can be met. I'm speaking more of traditional vanilla sex here. I'll probably do a whole other video about kinky and... Um, creative sex um, at another time but this is more on a vanilla level if your needs are not being met then you need to have a conversation with your partner again communication and if they're not willing to meet your needs then you might want to reevaluate the person that you are and that you were sleeping with whether it's a long-term partner or not because if they generally love you they're going to want your needs met one way or another so I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment down below, give me your questions, and you're always welcome to send me uh, sex advice questions. You can send them to me, my email, which is thesugarcyanide at gmail.com. You can post them here. You can message me just about anywhere you feel comfortable messaging me, and I will answer your questions via video. I will answer the question, but I'm not gonna say who sent me the question, basically. I respect your privacy, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. So thank you very much. You guys have a great day and happy Valentine's Day. The three C's, communication, condoms, and consent. Remember that and you'll have great, great, fabulous, amazing sex. Alrighty, thank you guys. Bye. Lemieux. Lemieux.